and after the session. It might take um, a uh, some hours because it will depend because our session will end at eight and then yeah, I will see when will I upload them. If you have subscribed to my YouTube channel, you will get a notification when it gets uploaded. Please also, uh, when you go and look at the recordings, because I I actually assist statistics students mostly, so there will be a lot of videos that I post on statistics, so don't get confused. Just go to the playlist. Under the playlist, there should be Psych 3704 and you will only have the videos that relates to your modules there. So don't try and go and read the one that starts with STA 1610. Those are my statistics module classes. Okay. <clears throat> so let the games begin. Question number one. The process of finding a new uh, a way to measure construct so that it can be represented by a variable is referred to S. What is the answer to that question? Oh, that's the other thing. I don't give answers because I don't know the answers myself as well. So you can you unmute. Let's have the number discussion. One, number one. Number uh, one, the process of finding a way of men to measure. It's number two. I would say number two as well. It's number two, ma'am. Number two, the answer. Is it number two? It's operationalization. Yes. Are we all happy? That's number two. Yes. The mean, range, variance, and standard deviation are examples of number two. We tackled this one the other time. Are uh, examples of a descriptive analysis because descriptive analysis describes your data. And the mean gives you the location of the data, the range gives you range, variance, and deviation. Standard deviation gives you how. How diverse is your data? How far apart your data is from the mean? So it also gives you the location, but in terms of dispersion or variability. Okay. Are we doing? Uh, I did share ne? what paper we're doing is October, November 2017. And I think it's you are able to see right there. A theory is a or N, is it number one? Number three. Number three. Because a theory accounts for facts and mm -hmm. it will explain why facts are as they are observed. Happy? Do we all agree? Yes. Okay. Remember, you need to you, you need to talk to me so that if people don't agree, we need to go and find information about that. So I'm going to assume for those what like this, I don't know. Uh, all I know is certain things, but you guys need to assist me here. The process of selecting a subset of population. For a survey, is known as is it known as a calculation sampling or operationalization? Number two. two. Number two. The Number two. Sampling. 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 Yes, because when we have a population, we can just create a sample by selecting function of your sample or a subset of your population. And in fact, uh, there's somebody whose mic is on and there's a background noise. We can't hear you. Oh, okay. So if you have, a, if your background is not conducive enough to, oh, sorry, now it's me. 
I will put it on mute. Just give me a sec. Sorry about that. Mm. Okay. An inference is one, two, three, an explanation of why certain things are as they are observed to be an educated guess about how certain phenomena may be interrelated. Three, a generalization from a sample to a population which have a high probability of being true. One, two, or three. 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 It's three. Inference we make. Three is correct. Decision about the population based on the sample. Okay. Number six, empirical or empirically means based on, is it on theory, observation, and facts? And I observation. think observation. Mm -hmm. it's based on observations. Which of the following best describe latent? And this is one of those things that I don't know. Uh, what is a latent? Number two. <laughs> two. two. It's hidden. Hidden. Because uh, I know one should describe something that is hidden. One should describe something that is uh, not, not hidden. Which one is? Manifest. <laughs> Number seven is two, it's hidden. I made notes somewhere, let's see, uh, to help those who don't know. So a light, a latent is invisible, can be constructed by manifest. And a manifest is visible and can be observed. Okay, so now I know. I need to remember that also for future. Okay, so the one that will be number two. So in a way it says a latent will be your dependent variable, isn't it? Is the one that you want to also predict based on the observations. It's something that you don't like. Things like anxiety, you can't see or depression you can't see but you can predict uh, or iq or intelligence or emotional intelligence yeah. you can't see it but you can estimate what yes it's okay important. now i got it okay a psychologist number eight a psychologist has a theory that visualize pe perceptual ability influences the marks oh gosh wait let me read it again a psychologist has a theory that vi that visual pe perceptual ability influences the marks that the learners will get in mathematics in this example visual perceptual ability is what variable is it a dependent independent and hidden number two it will be independent because it influences what the mark will do. So that right. will be your X observation and that will be your Y. That is your input. This is your outcome. And that is independent variable. When a construct is measured, the resulting quantity is referred to as variable. as a variable. The mean is the sum of all the observations. The standard error is the deviation of the, the mean of the observations from the means. <clears throat> 
what number is this? Ten. Uh, a psychologist. I remember, yes. I also remember. I don't know if it's my connection, but I can hardly hear you. You can hardly hear me. I don't know if it's. Yeah, I don't know if it's only me. Or if it's uh, and now, can you hear me? So you want me to speak loud? I am as loud as I can be, actually. It's clear on my side. Yeah, I think it might be your might be her network. You are very okay, clear. what what I will suggest is check the connection. Yeah, check your 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 settings and increase your volume, maybe. Uh, or put on earphones as well. I think sometimes they help. Okay, so question yeah, 10. Yeah, maybe, is, it's the, it's, maybe it's the way that it's so easy to say. Oh, okay. Okay, so question 10. A psychologist is interested in studying the interaction between small groups of four to five people in each group. He suspects that the interaction between the groups can be described in a similar term to the interaction between the individual groups. In order to be able to do a scientific study of this, A, question, you would like, or oh, you would have to provide A or N definition of the mm, called interaction. Huh. He's interested in studying interaction between small groups in each groups. He suspects that the interaction between such groups can be described similar or in a similar term to the interaction between individual group in order okay. to do a scientific study of this question he would have to provide definition of the called interaction so is it I a see. can yeah. i jump in there for yes okay Yes. I, I would say looking at the at C, interaction would be uh, uh, a construct. So already that says to me C would be a construct, and I only see construct in number one. So my answer would be number one there. My answer would also be number one because um, for the um, um, for the researcher to 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 start, there needs to be a research question for a research to operate. I agree with that. The research question must be established before research starts. So the question will read: If we select number one, in order to be able to do a scientific study of this. A research question would have to provide an operational definition of the construct. Does it read much better? Yes, definitely it does. Because this one would have said, if I take this one, uh, <clears throat> to do a scientific study of this experimental, he would have to provide a research definition of statistic called interaction. No, doesn't sound right. Hypothetical question, no, also doesn't sound right because I have to provide an empirical definition. No, also doesn't. So number one is the right answer. And also based on what everybody has just said in order to identify which one will be correct because interaction will, will not be a statistic or a parameter. Um, it can be, but in this instance, it's not because we're not going to define those ones, but you can define your construct because it's those observations that you make. <clears throat> okay, so 
question 11. The variable manipulated by the researcher in an experiment is called the... Mm, is it an I'm empirical? Thinking. Is it an independent or is it a dependent? I would say two. I would say two as well. It is called an independent variable because he will have to manipulate your independent variable when you use them in your model or any way where you want to test or you want to predict an outcome, which will your outcome would be your dependent variable. The term population refers to. Number one. Number one, yes. The natural process. Number one. Number one is correct because this one set is the subset and this one says the set of all variables because all variables form part of the group and we're not interested in the set of variable, we're interested in the set of the population, which is all set of L or all elements of interest. And all elements of interest have variables that are characteristics that defines those elements or that set. So it cannot be that. So number one is correct. The symbol X bar refers to mm, while the symbol mu refers to what when you answer this question think of it this way we have a population which is big and then we have a sample which is small always when it talks to the like symbols always think of it complex simple So complex, complex in a way that you can't even pronounce it. Simple in a way that you can all actually even make sense out of it to say, oh, this letter represents an X. So the simple X bar refers to, and while well, the mu refers to. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one, this is your sample mean, which is your simple X bar, mm -hmm. and your Greek letter. So I could have just said Greek. We use Greek letters. Mu is your population mean. So this would have been correct, but this is wrong, and that is not a standard deviation. A standard deviation is sigma for the population, or that is the sample. For the sample, standard deviation is S. That would have been an S. And for the population variance, that would have been a sigma squared. You need to also know that that is a variance. It's sigma squared. And the population standard deviation would have been just the sigma. In pro probability theory, the number of distinct events that could possibly occur during a performance of an experiment is referred to as number three. Number one. In a probability theory, the number of distinct events that could possibly occur during the performance of an experiment they are referred to as. It's like number one about the population. Number one is not correct. Number two number is three. not correct. Number three is correct. Number three. Because here we're talking about the number of, it's a collection of all events. If you watch the last session that we had together, I don't know when did we have it. When we dealt, dealt with probabilities, we spoke about the sample event which is a collection of all events in a simple uh, sorry those who don't know me uh, i don't have a good handwriting so 
you will bear with me. You will just listen to my voice. It's a collection of all events. That is a sample space. Question 15. The table below gives the frequency distribution. So this is a summary table of numerical information of exam of number of students in a psychology exam mark. So they gave the range which starts at 40 and, the above, and ends at above 81 and they have your frequency count. The question is, what is the probability that a student will get a mark between mark between 51 and 70? 51 and 70, which is those two together. Or maybe I should have extended the table this way. What is the probability that a student will get a mark between those two? So in a nutshell, what they are asking you is, you need to add all these values, calculate what we call here, total. Um, so did you calculate? You need to do the calculations. So add them, 8 plus 12 plus 20 plus 30 plus 22 plus 18. What do you get? 104. 104. 110. 110. Now we need to come here and calculate the percentage. Actually, not a percentage. We need to calculate a relative frequency. Oh, I need to get to the just of things so we need to come here and calculate what we call the relative frequency and we can use this relative frequency as our probability so how do we calculate that you need to add uh, you need to say 8 divided by 110 What do you get? It's 0, 0.07. I'm going to leave it at two decimal because I see our probabilities here as are two days in two decimal. Then we need to say 12 divided by I'm going the, the long route anyway. So but I'm just demonstrating the concept. Um, because we didn't cover this during our sessions. 12 divided by 1110, and that will be uh, 0 0.11. 0 0.11, you need to round off correctly as well, because the answer there was 0 0.10. Nine. So if I round it off, it will be 0 0.111. And then 20 divided by 20 divided by 1110. You will say 20 divided by 1110. 0 0.18. 0 0.18. The next one, 30 divide. 30 divided by 1110, 0 0.27. 30 divided by 1110, 0.27. I'm not gonna complete the whole table, so you get the you get the gist of things. You understand what we we, we were doing there. So when you do all of them and complete that the total year at the bottom should be equals to what, uh, one 
the answer for this should be equal to one. And remember that the sum of all probabilities are equals to one. So when you get one there, you know that you have done the right calculation. You can go ahead and do 22 divided by 110 and 18 divided by 110 and get the answer. And add all the relative frequencies and see if you get one. But I'm going to stop right there so that we can move on. Uh, so, what we need to do right now is to answer the question that we asked. So the question says we need to find the probability that the mark, which I'm going to call it my x value, lies between 51% and 70%. So if that is the case, so therefore it means I'm going to have to find the relative frequency of my value where it is equal to 51 and 60 percent plus my relative frequency where it is 61 or where x is equals to so i can put these things in the don't forget the percentages as well where x is equals to uh, 61 percent please forgive me for my handwriting okay let me rewrite it nicely sorry my bad because i i can't even see what i am writing let's let's write it maybe i will second time around it will appear right Working on a PDF, it's difficult than when you work on a PowerPoint. Okay, it did remove that. So we need to find the probability where X is between 51% to 60%. Plus, we need to add, because it says between 50 and 70, plus where X is equals to. 61% to 70%. Which then we did calculate that. Remember I said these are our probabilities. So we're going to take 0, 0,18, 0, 0,18 plus we need to add 0, 0,27. And that will be 7 plus 8 is 5, carry 1. 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4, comma, 0. You can take your calculator and also calculate it, which is 0, 0,45. Or alternatively, because I showed you the long way of doing it, alternatively, we could have just said, I'm going to show you another way of doing the same thing. Let me use the site. without complicating your lives. So, but you know that uh, you need to share with people different ways and they need to select whichever one they feel comfortable with. So because they said we need to find the probability of X lying between the two values. So we could have went and got the values, which is 20 plus 30 and divide that by 110. And the answer that we will get here would have been 50 divided by 110. Do the calculation. What is 50 divided by 110? 0,45. Yeah. 50 divided by 110, it will be 0, 0,45. 0, 0,45. Option one or option two. So number one or number two, whichever step you want to follow, there is no right or wrong way of doing math. There are many ways to skin a cat. So I've shown you one and the other one. So choose whichever one you feel comfortable with. I've shown you the statistical way of doing it and the easy way of doing it. 
as well. So the complex way and the simplest way. But I needed to do the complex way first. Okay, so that is one. Number 16. A test for short-term memory capacity is normally distributed with the mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10. What is the probability that a person is chosen at random? Now, that's the other thing. In your exam, you need to also bear in mind when you answer your question, how do you identify what question and what you need to do with that question. So how would how did I know that with this question, when they are asking me about the probabilities, I need I needed to do this. It's because when they talk about frequency distribution and they ask about the probabilities, I know that they are talking about discrete probabilities. So and as long as they give me a table with my X observation and my frequency, and they're asking me to calculate my probability, which will be my probability of X. Um, then I know that this is my discrete probabilities. Now, moving to this one, it's also asked about the probabilities. I need to know when they start talking about normally distributed and they give me the mean and the standard deviation. Then I need to know that here we're talking about the normal distribution. And when they talk about normal distribution and they ask me about the probability, what comes to my mind, it means I need to also use the table. We did cover this the last time we met, so I hope you still remember. We need to first calculate the Z score because we need to first standardize the equation or the units of 125. We also need to bear in mind the sign of the question because it says, what is the probability that a person chosen at random will have a score of 125 or more? So it means greater than. And when it's greater than, there are a couple of things in your mind that you need to also remember. When you go to the table, what will happen? If my answer is negative, what will happen if my answer is positive? What must happen? You need to also have that in your mind. So it says we need greater than, and we know our formula is the X bar minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Our mean given, our standard deviation given, and our X always in the question. So I want you to do the calculation. So our X is 125 minus the mean of 100 divided by the standard deviation of a 10. Do the calculation. Leave your answer to two decimals if possible. Let me know how much you get. 3.5. 2.5. Two point five. Two point five. Two point five. Okay, so it seems everybody is getting the same. Two point five. I'm gonna just put a zero there at the end. Um then we need to go to the table. But you also need to remember the following. Uh, our sign says greater than. So when it's greater than and our answer is positive, which side of the table must we look for? The smaller portion. The smaller portion. Which is, okay. which is three. Yes. So let me show those who didn't attend and they didn't watch the recording. So if it's greater than, you can just draw, your, like for example, if you forgot, you can just draw your normal distribution table or um, graph. So it says greater than, so it means it will fall this side. So if it is positive, it will be from the smaller side. If it's negative, it will be 
larger site. So mm. we're gonna go to the table. I'm gonna scroll up. That's where we find the tables. So in this instance, you should have another, you can have another thing open next door to check your table. Maybe I should have opened another exam paper. So we are here on the probability table. We're looking for 2.50, so I must go to the two. So this is 0, 0.00, so we need to find two point. This is once, and this is 2.03, 2 point, we're looking for 2.5, ne? 2.5, so okay. that is 55. That is, oh, I've got there. So that is what we're looking for. So where is, we're looking for the smaller portion or larger portion, sorry. Smaller. Right smaller portion so we're looking for the last column so we're not looking for that one so we can go to the last column which is that should be our answer 0 0.0062 let's go back to the question I'll, I'll open another exam paper and leave it there for so that we don't have to scroll <clears throat> so many times we can just save time. Come on. Where were we? Oh, there we go. So quick, the quick, answer we found was quick, quick question. Yes. So if the the question remains the same, everything remains okay. The question remains the same, but X. Let's say it's less than 100, where it will give you a negative answer. And they still want uh, or more. And meaning our, our, our answer will be negative. So we'll only be, we'll be looking at the, the larger portion since the, the yes. answer is negative. Yes. So if, if the answer here was minus. Yes. Uh, sorry, on a PDF, my thing, it does that all the time. I don't know why it flicks. So, sorry, it will come back, maybe, let's see, doesn't want to come back, oh, there we go, let's give it some time, okay, so the, ha, huh, I don't know, Okay, but to get the idea, so when it's negative, then you go to the larger portion. So if it's negative there, you are, you will go to the larger portion. So I'm not going to entertain that flicking around. So you will the larger portion, yeah. We can move on, yeah. Thanks. So that would, yeah. Okay, so moving on to number 17. Suppose the weight of population military recruits are normally distributed with the mean of 64 and the standard deviation of 8. Different samples for this recruit, each with a sample size of 16, are drawn. We would expect the standard deviation of the sample means, which is the standard error, to be so yeah, they're asking you to find the standard error. So you also need to remember that. Remember now, also we're still in the population. So the minute they start introducing concepts like standard error, then we moved away from normal distribution. We are now in the sampling distribution of the means because then now we're talking about multiple samples. Uh, on the other one, when we were talking about normally distributed, we were only talking about when we have only one thing. Here we say we have different samples. So this is your sampling distributions. So because we're talking about multiple samples, then they're asking you to calculate the standard error. If they were not asking you to calculate the standard error, they would have asked you to calculate the Z. I'm just going to write the Z formula. Oh, yeah. Z formula, it says, the sample mean, 
uh, it will find me minus the population mean divided by the standard error, which is your population standard deviation. Oh, come on. Well, we started nicely, and this happens. It is Friday for this uh, thing. I, yes. I guess so. <laughs> my my PC is telling me it's six o'clock. You shouldn't be doing this. So standard deviation divided by the square root of n. It will come back. <laughs> OK, so. This part at the bottom of this formula. Oh, gosh. That part is what we call the. Standard error. Um, just give me a sec. Let me stop sharing and I'll come back and share again. I'm not sure if it is my PC or the system or my system itself. I just want to see if I'm not sharing. If things don't flick, things don't flick. So it's only when I am sharing, then I don't know how to to handle that okay let's see so gosh. okay so this thing doesn't want me to to show you so what you see there at the bottom, that's what I wanted to write there, is your standard error. So this is your standard error, which is your standard deviation of the sample means. So that's what they're asking you to calculate. So in order to calculate that, you just need the standard deviation of 8. So because I wanted to write it here, the square root of n, standard deviation of 8 divided by the square root of 16. Do you know how to use your calculators? On your calculator, you have the square root button. So I don't know. The answer is two. Yes, because uh, the square root of 16 is four. four. Divide, eight divided by four. Eight goes two times And the answer is two. I don't understand this and I can't write it down when it's flashing. Hey, <coughs> yes, it's very disturbing and irritating. You see the, the, the one that you wrote first, um, the, the Z um, formula. First, you put an S at the bottom. Is is S equal to That's sigma over the square root of N? Sigma is not an S. Or on your side, do you see it as an S? Is a sigma? Uh, like oh, this. is that a sigma? Yes. So it's not okay. visible nicely. Sorry. It looks like an S. Let's extend Sorry. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you, my handwriting. It's good that you are asking because my handwriting is so terrible. I thought just because it's jumping, my eyes are also jumping. Okay. It looks like a S sigma. That's just, that's your standard deviation. I don't know why he's doing that. Why is it behaving like that? Okay, so that is 17, 18. Oh, we still have a long way to go. We are only on 18. A marble is the individual things like this, then you must know that this is basic probabilities. If one marble is drawn at a box or at random from the box, what is the probability that it will be read? So we need to add up all of them so that we know what our sample space is. In this instance, what our n is. So we say 6 plus 4 plus 5 is equals to how many there are? 
15. 15. That, is, that is our sample space and we know that the probability of x being red because they say only if one marble is red so we can say where x red is one only one marble that is given by oh not the probability again but it's given by x number satisfying the outcome divided by how many there are Zero point four. The answer is two. Zero point four. Six over six fifteen plus zero point four. There are six red marbles over over fifteen. Over 15. Number two. Zero point four. Zero point four. Okay. There are 19 females and eight males in a, in a group of psychology students. Of the 19 females, only four have no brothers, while three of the males are, only, are the only children. If a student is selected at random from the group, what is the probability that it will be a female with no sibling? Now, remember that time when we were doing the probability, I said I like to use contingency tables as well. Because here we can have our females and our males. And we can say there are 19 females and there are only eight males because that is our total. But they also said brothers and no brothers. Brothers and no brothers. So only four females have no brothers or sister so let's see no brothers or sister four of them that will be there uh while three of the males are only children are the only children which is exactly the same which is exactly the same which is no brother or sister. If a student is selected at random from the group, what is the probability that it will be a female with no sibling? Number three. Number, three. Number satisfying females, no sibling, divide by the total. Remember that will be a joint probability, a probability of female and no sibling. I don't know how to write that. But we know that inside we create joint probabilities. Outside IO, as that's where you calculate your simple probability. What is 19 plus 8? 27. So that will be 4 divided by 27. which is option number three. Three. Is it possible to not go to use this, um, to not use the table because I'm looking at the, the, the whole question and just by saying 19 plus eight, um, it's 27. Uh, 
Um, Remember, you don't have to use the table. It's just to help you understand what the question is talking about so that then you don't have to always scratch your head. So if they would have said, uh, what is the probability of females with siblings? You would have done 90 minus 4 because here they say only has no brother and sister. So therefore, it means the remaining has at least a brother or a sister, a sibling. Yeah. So it, it would have been 15. So you see, you are able to just quickly populate and calculate what is missing and yeah. use what is missing to answer the question. Yeah. So here we could have just taken the four and divided by 19 plus eight as well, which is what we did here. That's what I did in my head without using the table. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I'm just giving you tools as well. So whichever one you feel comfortable with, the easiest. So you don't have to waste. Remember I told you in the beginning, you have almost like 60 to 70 questions. You're writing a two hour exam. You don't have time to find alternative ways of answering questions. Find the one that is easiest. And then move to the next one, move to the next one. Okay. Question 20, a variable is normally distributed with the mean of 50 and the standard deviation of 10. If this variable is transformed to a standardized normal distribution, what will the value of the mean and the standard deviation of this Z distribution be? So here they are asking you, what are the properties of a normally distributed? Number one. Yes, I say that you. With the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. There is nothing we can do about it because they just want to know what will be the mean and the standard deviation of this Z distribution. Okay, 21. The probability of an event can be determined by, remember, we're talking about the probability. One, the set of all possible values of a statistics when all possible values of a fixed size are taken from the population. Observing the number of times that an event occurs divided by the number of times that it could possibly occur during a specific experiment. The distribution of means obtained from all possible samples, which can be established by applying a central limit theorem. One, two, or three. I'm guessing, but I said two. That's one. <laughs> okay, so why one, one is incorrect? One is incorrect mm. because it talks about the statistic and the possible values of a fix taken from a population that would explain something else. It's not explaining the probabilities. Number three is also not correct because it talks about the distribution of the sample means. So this is a definition of sampling distribution because it talks about different sample size that can be established from a central limit theorem. Remember, the central limit theorem will tell you when you increase the value of your standard deviation. Uh, let's go back there. When you increase the value of this standard deviation, what happens to this, when you in to the probability? When you increase the value of your mean or your sample, what happens? That's what central limit theorem will do. Um, oh, and going back there while we still at that. So this is the formula we use to calculate the sampling distribution of the mean Z score and we use this to find the probability as well. And in the hypothesis, we also use the same formula. Okay, let's go. Something moved. Okay, so that and that is not true. What makes number two true is it talks about an event happening. Remember, probability is a study of chances. It's a, 
study of events occurring, a probability that something will occur, an event will happen. Um, and that's the correct answer is number two. By convention, the total area underneath the normal curve is set to equal. Is it zero? Is it the standard deviation? Is it one? We also deal, dealt with this on Tuesday. As one. Remember, the total yeah. area is your probability. One, this one. Is one. Is one. Okay. So the area underneath the curve that is this shaded area is always equals to one and split it into half this side will be 50 percent and that side will be 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. Uh, somebody's unless it's my pc uh lita mute yeah that's lita Okay. The mean, yeah. The mean and the standard deviation of a set of tests are 20 and 8. So this is our mean and this is our standard deviation. If the Z score, which corresponds to the test score, is 14, that's the Z score, or the test score of 14 is calculated, which in which of the interval listed below will it fall? So probably here yeah, they want you to go and find, calculate the Z, or calculate the probability. Hmm. Very difficult to tell which okay. of the following intervals. So if we take our Z score, let's just calculate our Z score, because we used our Z score to compare uh so we say the mean uh, x bar minus the mean divided by the standard deviation so our x bar or oh, our x is 14 minus the mean is 20 and the standard deviation is 8. calculate Zero comma seven five. Minus zero comma seven five. So which interval will it fall in? Number two. <clears throat> the distribution of sample means, which is sampling distribution for the number of sample drawn from the same population can be determined because of is it one, the Z distribution? Two, is it the central limit theorem? Three, is it the statistical inference? I would guess and say three. I'll guess and say two. Um, let's go to, do, do you have, a, I keep on talking about sampling distributions oh. and all that. Do you guys talk about sampling distributions on your, on, in your module? Yes, you do. Page 57. Page 67. Is it page 67 on your site? Told you there will be some places where we go back and look at. And it's specified by. We have shown this, that the distribution of the sample means can be obtained for a very simple and specific question. Fortunately, 
the general characteristic of the distribution of sample statistics, such as the mean, are specified by mathematical call central limit theorem. It follows as such. If a sample random sample of any selected from, okay, the sampling distribution of mean obtained from all possible sample is approximately normally distributed from all possible sample is approximately normal with the mean and the standard deviation. The central gives you a precision of the distribution that will be obtained if you selected every possible sample. Okay, so we have our answer. And our answer is option number two. Uh, and then we come to asymptotic property of a normal curve. Oh, so what does that refer to? The fact that, so an asymptotic property of a normal curve refers to the fact that one, number two, the curve is barely curved, two, the endpoints of the curve gets closely to the X without touching it, or three, the curve is symmetrical. It is number two. Number two. Symmetrical, it will refer to that the mean and the median are equal. The belly curve will just, just talk to the distribution of the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. The asymptotic manner will tell you that this curve always come closer to the x-axis, but it will never touch the x-axis. That is an asymptotic property. Consider a hypothesis which describes a possible relationship between two variables. Now we're talking about the relationship between two variables. The null hypothesis refers to which specific kind of a relationship between the two variables. Oh, yeah, right? Number one, no relationship. Number two, positive relationship. Number three, significant relationship. Number one. Number one. Okay. And that will be number one because when we state the hypothesis testing, the null hypothesis will state that there is no relationship, which means they are independent. With the flicking, flicking, disturbing me in the independent and your alternative will state that there is a relationship which will and now it's worse which will mean that they are dependent oh yeah right? maybe probably in my afterlife i was supposed i'm gonna be a doctor I don't even have to independent independent. Okay. Statistical hypotheses are statements about one, the population parameter, two, sample statistic, three, Z distribution. When we state the hypothesis testing, do we use the sample or do we use the Z distribution or do we use the population parameter? One. 
we always use population parameter. For example, when we state that, for a null hypothesis, we state that the mean is greater than 100. We use the population. We don't say the null hypothesis says the mean bar is greater than 100. Or we don't say the mean, the Z distribution is greater than 100. We don't do that. We don't do that. We use population parameters. So that is correct. Suppose we had uh, have stated that the null hypothesis, the mean is equal to 10, and the alternative, the mean is less than 10. So you always remember that your null hypothesis always have an equal sign, and your alternative helps you to make the decision because the sign in your alternative will tell you what type of a test you're doing. Are you doing a directional test or are you doing a non-directional test? Okay, find the sample mean cross uh, and find that the sample mean corresponds to the Z of minus three. This means that the corresponding P value would be. So also based on what we have, we can also go with our normal distribution and say if it's negative, we use smaller portion, negative, smaller portion, positive, larger portion. So now we have our Z. We need to go find the probability, which is our P value. We find it on the table. The Z score is minus three. So therefore it means we're going to go to the Z normal distribution table and look for three without the minus because the minus helps us in knowing whether are we going into the smaller portion or the larger portion or if i can remember this uh we're looking for the smaller portion so it's the last column so you take your three and you go to the smaller section which is 0, 0,0013 and it is equals to, I don't know why I'm giving you all the answers now and not letting you do this or tell me. Okay, happy? Yes, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, moving. A hypothesis which the alternative states that the mean is greater than 50 is a mm, hypothesis and requires a mm, statistical test. Number I'm three. guessing number three. Number three. Yeah. You are correct. Three. It is three. number three because it's a one directional test. And when I'm saying it that way, so I've already said. It's a directional test, which requires a one tail test. It's number three. The level of significance of a statistical test, which is an alpha value, refers the p value such as the calculated from the test statistic, indicates the maximum risk that the researcher is willing to take for a for making a type one error is used to indicate the probability of making an error by not rejecting the null hypothesis. I think it's two. I think it's two. You think is two. Let me open the note. Uh, and I think it's something that we did right in the beginning, did we? No, I didn't do it with you guys. Okay, so I didn't do it with 
your class. I did it with the IOP class. Mm. It can be number three or number two. Let's let me just double check that. Uh, when do we make type one error? Sorry, I want to open the notes. It's the notes of statistics. No, man. So many but notes. So many that notes. That one error occurs when the null hypothesis is wrongly rejected. So we type one error is when the null hypothesis is rejected but is true. So what does yeah. the question is asking? It says it indicates the probability of making an error by not rejecting the null hypothesis. But is, the, is the question about the uh, is the question about the the error type or is it indicating what that p value represents? It asking you about no. It's asking you about the error type because the level of significance. Uh, let's let's go there. Uh, where would we find it? Let's go search find from your notes. Find where is find? Where is find? We looking for the labels. Type one error. You can find it. Not gonna find I'm not gonna find it there. I think type we level of significance. Oh. What did we do this? Which section of research analytics we did this in our session one? Maybe we can check page one oh five. Page one oh five. Oh, it's, it's on page 84 on the study guide. Page 84? Yeah. Okay. Page, page 85, the second paragraph. There we go. So, aha. Uh -huh. So yeah. the level of significance, uh, the value alpha represents the maximum risk that we are willing to take to make a type one error of rejecting the null hypothesis. So let's go there. It's used by the probability of making it. So that won't be right. This will be the correct one because it's the same as uh is the maximum risk that the researcher is willing to take to make a type one error by rejecting the null hypothesis making a type one error 
which that one will be because this one is broad because it says making an error you can make either a type one error or a type what type two error which is type two type two error i know that it's a beta uh, significant and type one error is alpha so the right answer is option two option two So the answers are in the study guide. I told you, I'll open your study guide. We'll always make reference to it so that we don't make any mistake. When applying a statistical test, if the p-value is larger than the significance, we the alternative. So the decision, this is the decision rule. You always need to remember that. We do not reject. We, oh, we are the set. decision. The decision we fail to reject number yes, two. The, yeah. So the decision rule says if the p value is less oh, than alpha, oh, yeah. we reject yes. the null hypothesis. So if the p value it's greater than or equals to alpha. We do not reject the null hypothesis. No, we do not reject the null hypothesis. But now we're not talking about the null hypothesis. So this is the rule. But we're not talking about the null hypothesis. They're talking about the alternative. So, based on the decision rule, based on the decision rule, it says if the p value is larger than the level of significance, which is the second part, if it's gosh, if it's bigger than the level of significance it says we reject the null hypothesis so if we do not reject sorry it says we do not reject the null hypothesis if we do not if we are not rejecting the null hypothesis therefore it means we are failing to do what to the alternative except Fail no. to reject. No, we fail to reject. Uh, no, 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 no. We, we do, do not, not accept. accept. If it's not number not one, accept. we yes. do not accept. We do not accept because we're not rejecting the the null hypothesis. So we okay. so we saying the null hypothesis is true. Yeah. If it's greater than, therefore, it means we saying the alternative is not true. Oh, so we say now we are talking the about the alternative. Yes, we're talking about the alternative. So if we're not rejecting the null hypothesis, therefore we are we are not accepting the alternative. So we do not accept the alternative. So you always need to go back to the rule because that will give you a, the base in terms of how you can answer the question because here they're asking in relation to the alternative. So if we were rejecting the null hypothesis, if it was less than, then we would have um, sailed uh, one of the two. Either we fail to reject the alternative or we accept the alternative because we will be rejecting the null hypothesis. Okay. Now we go to type two error. Type two error occurs when, this is one of the other section that I am, I have forgotten about it because we did this in my first year of stats. And now we no longer talk about it. And the stats that I assist, we don't even look at the type errors. So it has been very long. So a type two error, 
let's first look at the question what the options are. A type 2 error occurs when 1. The null hypothesis is rejected when it should not be rejected. That won't be two. Number two, the null hypothesis is not rejected when it should be rejected. That sounds familiar. The alternative hypothesis not accepted when it should be accepted. Number so, two, it should be rejected. Type two error is not rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is not true. So that is straightforward. It's not rejecting when it should be rejected. Yeah? Which one? Number? Number two. <laughs> Number two. Number two. Yes. Number, Number, two. Two. Number two. Number two. Uh, good people, can we take... I need to go drink water. Can we take five minutes? Just go. Right? We have been going on for almost one hour, 30 minutes. We still have one hour, water. 30 minutes left. Are you going to drink just water? Ha! Ha! <laughs> I also need to use the bathroom again. Okay. <laughs> okay. See you at so what time? Going, I'm also going to stop the recording so that then this can be uploaded as part one and then we'll go and do part two later on. Okay, so it's 6.32 now. When, what time are we coming back? Uh, at... Six. Let's let's. Uh, let. I'm I'm also Maybe gonna check if the kids had had eaten. Wait. Uh, 